Hello students, I hope you are doing well. So welcome back to Microbial Concepts and here is another topic on dairy microbiology that is microbial examination of milk. Okay, so let's start with the topic. So microbial examination of milk, it can be done by following methods that is first one standard pleat count. So all the information which I'm discussing here is taken from an article of biologyreaders.com and I find it very easy and very uh, simple language to understand and remember as you have to write answers on questions on this topic. Okay, so first is standard plate count. So it is also known as viable count method. So what is viable count method? It means that the number of bacteria which are viable, okay, those you can count. So, which examines the viable bacteria present in milk. It gives a rough and direct estimate of viable number of bacteria and a very simple method is to carry out. So, the procedure is you take 1 ml of milk sample, then prepare serial dilutions by transferring 1 ml of sample to each tube by 10 times and 100 times dilutions. Then, you select last three dilutions and spread 0.5 ml of milk sample over the solidified agar media. Okay, you spread it by using a glass spreader, a glass spreader and then you incubate the prepared plate for 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours at 35 to 37 degrees Celsius and then finally you count the number of colonies. Okay, so you do the serial dilutions, then from last three dilutions, you transfer 0.5 ml of milk sample, spray it and incubate it and you will get the observations. Okay, so interpretation of result. So more than 300 colonies indicate that milk is unpotable. So if the solution or your milk sample is more diluted, then it will produce the highest number of colonies. Okay. So you should not get or you should get very, very minimum number of colonies in your last dilution. Okay. And so if your solution is more diluted and still you are getting the highest number of colonies, it means that milk becomes importable. So whereas less diluted solutions will produce less number of colonies. Okay. So another test is coliform count. So it is known or sorry, it is used to examine the presence of coliform bacteria. Now, what are coliform bacteria? So coliform bacteria are one which are present in environment. Okay, right. Like in water and even in feces of warm blooded animals and humans. Okay, they are widely present and they have ability to cause fermentation of milk by production of acid and gas. So it becomes necessary to detect the presence of coliform as they make the milk unpotable for human consumption. So what is the procedure? We use McConkey's fluid media that is McConkey's broth uh, which has a Durham's tube inserted in it and we add a different concentrations of, ferment, uh, of milk to these fermentation tubes. Okay and then we incubate for 24 to 48 hours at 35 to 37 degrees Celsius and then the results are written depending upon the uh, observations. Okay. So interpretations are like the result is given as positive if there is a color change that is from purple to yellow with the gas formation. Okay. That is gas bubbles are observed in Durham's tube. So this is the positive tube. Okay. Or the positive result. So here you will see acid and gas formation both. The color change is also from purple to yellow and it is given as negative if there is no acid and no gas formation is observed. Then next one is methylene blue reductase test. So it is a rapid method to determine the microbial load and using this test we can identify the quality of milk depending upon the color retaining property. So the speed of reduction of methylene blue color is directly proportional to the volume of bacteria that are present in the milk. Okay, so the speed is directly proportional to the volume of bacteria. Okay, speed of reduction of the color. So in simple words, an increasing number of bacterial flora will reduce the color of methylene blue more rapidly due to the consumption of oxygen present in the media. 
okay so the procedure is add a definite quantity of methylene blue to 10 ml of milk and after that hold the sample at 37 degrees celsius until the color disappears so now here you need to monitor uh, minutes required to uh, or minutes required for color to disappear okay so the interpretations are given as follows so if the mm, time required for color di uh, for color disappearance is 30 minutes to 2 hours then the quality is poor then 2 to 6 hours fair quality 6 to 8 hours good quality and over 8 hours is best quality as you can see more time is required for color to disappear that is 8 hours it, it took 6 to 8 hours okay so that it means that the quality of milk is very good or best hmm? and if uh, you will see the first point here that is 30 to 2 30 minutes to 2 hours so that is the very less time which was uh, required for the uh, reduction of methylene blue so it shows that it is the milk is of poor quality shorter the decoloration time higher the volume of bacterial flora present in milk and poor the quality of milk and vice versa so you can see here methylene blue is added to the uh, raw milk test tubes and rapid de rapid discoloration is this one then slow discoloration and very slow discoloration so this is how you monitor using a stopwatch you can monitor the color and you can interpret your results and depending on that you can interpret the quality of your milk next is resazurin test so it is similar to one that, that we saw just now that is methylene blue reductase test so procedure is firstly add resazurin to milk sample and then incubate the tubes for 10 minutes and observe the shade of your color so interpretation here is formation of pink color indicates presence of bacteria that reduces resazurin and negative means color remains unchanged that is bacteria are not present in milk and which indicates that milk is of good quality okay so when resazurin is added it gives milk a characteristic blue color and the test is based on the ability of bacteria which are present in milk to reduce the blue dye okay so the quality of milk is judged by uh, just noting the degree of color change from blue through mauve and purple and pink and finally colorless so after a stated period of incubation or the time that is required to re reduce the dye you can interpret your results okay so here you can see to the milk tubes resazurin dye is added then it is incubated and after incubation the color change is observed okay so uh, whether the color is blue or mauve or purple or pink or depending on that the results are interpreted okay so now we are looking towards the phosphatase test here so remember one point that resazurin test that we saw just now it is used to detect the presence of microbial load in raw milk here we are using pasteurized milk why so we have to check here the pasteurization process is carried out correctly or not okay or you can say that milk is pasteurized properly or not okay so there is an enzyme here that we want to detect that is alp or also known as alkaline phosphatases so the enzyme present in raw milk it is present in raw milk and it is in inactivated in the conditions of heat treatment so pasteurization is one of the heat treatment and the phosphatases enzyme inactivation temperature is slightly higher than that or uh, that is required for the destruction of pathogenic bacteria so it is very crucial to uh, inactivate the enzyme here and meet the standards which are required for the commercialization of pasteurized milk so the alkaline phosphatase test is one where the pasteurized milk is used to verify the pasteurization is done correctly or not okay so what is the procedure here so we take 5 ml of milk in a sterile test tube okay sterile test tube is must here and then we add a few drops of sodium diphenyl phosphate and after that we incubate the tube for 10 to 15 minutes so when a milk containing alkaline phosphatases enzyme is mixed 
and incubated with the substrate. So substrate here is sodium diphenyl phosphate. Uh, the enzyme in the milk should cleave the phosphate group from disodiophenyl phosphate and liberate phenol. The phenol then reacts with the color producing compound that is 2,6-dichloroquinone chloramide that is Q, CQC to give a blue color. Okay, so this is the actual reaction here and the intensity of the blue color depends upon the enzyme activity present in milk. Okay, so if the uh, phosphatases enzyme is present then your substrate will after addition of your substrate and incubation you will still get a blue color. Okay, so this indicates that the pasteurization is not done properly or another case that after pasteurization some of the raw milk was added into your pasteurized milk. Okay, so this got your milk again contaminated with the phosphatases enzyme and that's why you are getting this particular result. Okay, so if more the enzyme more phenol will be liberated giving you a deeper blue color and this test is actually or the results are observed visually or with using spectrophotometer okay so i hope this test you have understood there is no confusion here so interpretation is like blue color appears which indicates the presence of uh, phosphatases and it indicates that milk is not pasteurized properly no change in color it indicates that absence of phosphatases and milk is pasteurized properly okay then turbidity test so it checks the sterilization process of milk whether the milk is boiled correctly or not to the temperature prescribed for the sterilization the sterilized milk all the co coagulable uh, heat proteins they get precipitated okay so the procedure is we take 5 ml of sterilized milk then we add few drops of ammonium sulfate and boil it in the water bath for 5 minutes hmm? And then results are interpreted as positive if the turbi if turbidity appears. Okay, so after adding few drops of ammonium sulfate, boiling it in the water bath for five minutes, means incubating for five minutes, and then observing results. If still the turbidity appears, it means milk has not been sterilized properly. And in case of negative result, the turbidity indicates that the milk is no turbidity indicates that the milk is sterilized properly okay so turbidity does not occur it means that heat coagulable proteins will precipitate and if the turbidity occurs it means that heat coagulable uh, proteins are not precipitated okay and that's the reason why that's the reason why the turbidity is appearing and it indicates that the milk is not sterilized properly then direct microscope count so this is the one um, where yes raw material raw milk is used and it is a rapid method for microbial examination to determine the cell type and morphology so procedure is we take 0.01 ml of raw milk in glass slide of say hemocytometer actually and then air dry let it settle then add one drop of methylene blue so that it will stain the uh, microbial load and at last you count the bacterial clumps in the colony counter so the point main point here is you can count both viable and non-viable cells not like a standard plate count method where just viable cells where we were able to count okay so here you can count both viable and non-viable cells okay so i have covered all the uh, methods for microbial examination of milk and i hope this video video helps you thank you for watching do like my videos do share my videos with your friends and do subscribe to my channel thank you